But first, let's do this. Jared Oxendine of OxLawFirm.com joins us now. Jared, how are you doing today? Good afternoon, gentlemen. Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. So NFL ownership, I just read this long, complicated percentage thing about how ownership works in the NFL. Let's take it to the normal person because most people don't own an NFL team. Most people don't own anything that valuable, but assets are assets. Taxes as it relates to any family business. Arthur Blank once said, better to figure this out while you're vertical than have others figure it, figure it out when you are supine. Tell everybody how that works in the real world. The idea that you have this stuff taken care of before other people, you're gone, decide to fight over what it should be. Yeah, if you're already supine, that means you're already taken in the cheeks, right? So I love that advice by Arthur Blank. But, yeah, businesses in a marriage is an asset, and it's subject to being divided just like everything else. So if you're a business owner, it makes sense before you just rush in and file your divorce to not only consult with a divorce attorney but hire the right divorce attorney and let that attorney maybe also go ahead and hire a a business expert, a CPA. They can go ahead and start doing an evaluation of the company. Uh, take into account any unique circumstances or characteristics characteristics of the company that actually might devalue the company. Because I'll tell you, when, when I deal with business owners and the spouse is sitting on the other side, they just look at the business and they think they're just getting this big number. They see all this money in the bank account, but little do they know that money in that bank account has to be used to pay for company expenses and payroll and just to keep the business going is an ongoing concern. And then, you know, they want their share of the, the ownership interest of the business, which means sometimes my business owners have to liquidate stuff. And if you don't do it correctly and take uh, into account the tax consequences you're going to incur when you sell that stock to buy your person out, your spouse out, you've now way overpaid because you have paid them half of what the stock's worth. But guess what? You still got to pay the taxes because you liquidated the stock because you had a gain. So and remember, it gets complicated with the division of businesses, but you can do it the right way and be prepared. And whether it's estate taxes as well and things that come in, sometimes people just think, oh, I don't have that much. Better to have it in order, even if you don't think it's worth fighting over type numbers, uh, as to have it become a fight after the fact, correct? Absolutely, and especially over the past few years, valuation of businesses has fluctuated a lot. I might start a case you know, in January, and we might have one valuation of the business, but depending on what's going on with inflation and other economic factors – the value of that business may go down significantly before we finalize the case. All right. So you got to be prepared. Jared Oxendine joins us. Don't forget, oxlawfirm.com. I'll have Jared give you the phone number coming up in a second. Here's the other thing that I don't know if this is just a bad B movie or not. Implied verse on paper, is there such a thing as a handshake deal when it comes to, or do you trust anything close to a handshake deal, and should you? A handshake deal is only trust. I mean, you know, even with these sports contracts, Service contracts have to be in writing. Uh, contracts for the sale of property it has to be in writing. So you can have a handshake deal kind of as like a preliminary discussion, you know, hey, we're going to informally agree that we've got a deal, but you always then have to draft it up and get it signed. Until it's signed by both parties, it's not enforceable. So in, in case of, uh, let's say, an impending divorce, oh, I'm going to give you this, don't worry about it. That's, that's not really a thing, is it? No, that's purely aspirational. And sometimes people screw with people, right? I mean, you might tell your spouse, hey, I'm willing to do this and I'm willing to do that. And then when the rubber meets the road, you've changed your mind and you may were just trying to get the other person upset or, or giving them false promises to try and induce them to get them to act a certain way or give you some extra parenting time. So you can't really trust that. It, it's nice to, to make those aspirational promises. Hopefully the person follows through. But until it's in writing, not enforceable. All right, last thing, in writing. is Are things written on random pieces of paper binding they can be if both parties sign it. So keep in mind, there's not like a magic document. The paper that I type my agreements on is the same thing as a piece of notebook paper. If it has the necessary terms and elements and both parties sign off on it, it can be enforced just as if it was written on a typewriter or a computer. So don't think that just because you handwrite it on a document, if it has the proper consideration, it has the, prom the proper payment terms, and both parties sign it, it absolutely is enforceable. All right, you can contact Jared Oxendine at oxlawfirm.com. Jared, give everybody the phone number as well. 770-497-8688. Thank you, guys. All right, appreciate it, Jared. Thank you very 